Being a digital artist today feels like a constant battle against becoming obsolete, especially with AI reshaping everything. Every new tool and update seems to question the relevance of our skills with a lot of focus on the fear of being replaced. A more important question is, what does the digital artist of the future look like? What skills will be in demand and how do we stay competitive and secure our livelihoods and creative futures? We can already summon anything we like in seconds in both 2D and now even 3D. And it won't be long before we have tools like this in 3D applications. While most of the outputs from these tools are of decent quality, they still lack the control we need, and this paired with copyright issues mean we are still a little way away from being able to go from start to finish. <sighs> the truth is, if we continue to only rely on traditional techniques, we're gonna be risking our place in the industry. So you can sit back and watch the world change, or you can get involved. So let me show you how you can use AI as additive and hopefully change that AI anxiety into excitement with a step-by-step -step tutorial on how you can use it for your own projects. It wasn't long ago that a project would land on my desk and I'd start modeling everything from scratch. And now we can tap into vast model libraries. I'd create textures from photos and now we have texture libraries and material presets. Lighting techniques have evolved with easy to access IES profiles and HDR images. Rendering has progressed from scanline to ray tracing. Even post-production has now been integrated into the frame buffer. So the streamlining of tedious tasks at every step of the process has always been happening just not as fast as it is right now, which is making it more apparent. So these are all the shifts we've witnessed, so what's next? In past videos, we've looked at how AI image upscaling can effortlessly add a level of detail to an image in minutes that would normally take hours. By using frame interpolation and video upscaling, you can render one tenth of the frames traditionally required for an animation. And now there are other tools for post-production. Generative feel is a dream come true, but we've also been exploring sky replacement and AI enhancers for changing times, locations, and moods of images. And notice that all of these tools are to enhance rather than replace, much like the progress we've already seen through in 3D. So this all sounds great, but it's not just about the tools, it's about how we use them. Most generative AI tools face heavy criticism for using other people's data without their consent. Adobe are working on a project called Content Credentials, which is a new kind of metadata that enables creators to add extra information about themselves directly to their content and enhance transparency for their audience. Over time, if a piece of content undergoes different stages of editing or processing, it can also accumulate multiple content credentials, which is definitely a step in the right direction. I think one of the issues that torment digital artists is trying to balance between being an artist versus being a service provider of something that people will pay for. DeepMind founder Mustafa Suleiman said in the coming wave, once an innovation delivers a competitive advantage like this, everyone must either adapt to it, leapfrog it, switch focus or lose market share and eventually go bust. To earn a living, you need to provide something of value. So it's not a question of how we can just keep doing the same job. The days of photorealism being the unique selling point are fading. So the question is, how can the future digital artists offer something more useful and valuable than they currently offer to the people they serve? Could it be animation, showing the subject in different weather conditions, times of day? Maybe it's how it will look in 10, 20 or 50 years time. VR with tools like MViz is a very convenient option, but now I wanna show you one such way in action. So if you've been following the channel for a while, you're gonna remember this image that we created back in 2021. And the first thing I did with it was upscale it. And I also masked out some of the areas I didn't like and removed this tree using generative fill and made some color corrections. So already in a few years using upscaling, we can change our image from this to this. And the upscaling was done with Magnifique using film. And the prompt was a white Range Rover Discovery in the desert and the creativity was set to 10. And then maybe we need this image for online or print, like a double page spread or a website header. So what we can do is use generative fill to expand our image. And again, I made some color adjustments. Now we have a full page spread for our advert. And then we can easily switch our time of day. And I know that Photoshop has got built-in sky replacement tool. I actually prefer using Lumina Neo as the results I find are a little bit better. So this is our image with sunset. And then again, I made a few color corrections. So AI can improve the quality of the image and change the time of day, but what about the weather conditions? 
I think a good creative for this ad would be to show that the Range Rover is built for any weather and terrain. So to do this, I actually took our expanded image rather than the sunset one as I think it's gonna be easier to color correct later on. So I use this as the input and this image as the reference and I use style transfer. And I used the prompt white Range Rover discovery car in the snow. These were the settings and then I upscaled it. And this was the result that I got back. So I know the car isn't looking too good, but what I can do is mask that out and just color correct it a little bit. And then I put a color lookup table on and made a few more adjustments. And this is what came out of our snow version. And you can see that I managed to mask in some of the tires as well to make the car fit better within the image. So then I tried a few others out. This again was our input image and this was our reference image and this is the result we got out. So I masked our car back in, made some color corrections and this time I worked on the reflections a bit and the windows and put a color lookup table and did a few more color adjustments. So this was our spring or field version and the next one was super fun. This one I wanted rain so this was again the input image and this is what we got out so I masked back in our car and these were some of the adjustments we did um, I even put some rain over the top of the car and this was our final result and the next one this one was a little harder so I used this image as the reference and this is what we got back and then I masked in our car and did some color adjustments and this is what we got. As you can see, we went from this image from 2021, we managed to expand it, we changed it to sunset and then we moved it into a snow scene. Then we put it into the English countryside, then in the rain and then in fall. So this is a way that we can add an extra layer of our deliverables for our clients. And it's pretty simple. So if you want a more detailed tutorial of every step how I did this, let me know in the comments. As always, AI springs healthy debate. So let's have that nicely in the comments.